A successful politician hanging up his boots on the eve of a big election. That too to focus on journalism. That's not something you hear every day. This was the announcement made by MP from uh, Dhen Canal constituency in Odisha who said he wants to focus on journalism instead and will not be contesting the next election, which is just a couple of months away. To find out why, we're speaking now with four-time MP Tathagat Satpati, formerly of the Biju Janata Dal. Mr. Satpati, welcome and thank you for speaking with us. I'm just going to begin by asking why. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a very pertinent question. Why it means I finally thought, now I am 63 years old, I thought that when we are always talking that India is going to be the youngest country with the largest population of below 35s by the next year, 2020, and I have been hearing this for the past 15 years in the Lok Sabha, uh, eventually what are we doing, we old uh, hags, what are we doing? And uh, then my son, who's 12 and a half years old, and he's not interested in contesting my seat anyway, uh, he told me that, uh, Baba, you leave this and uh, be at home, be in Orissa, and uh, spend more time for journalism, and uh, spend more time with me, because he will pass out in another four years, and once he's grown up, he's gone from home, wherever he will study, he will leave. So I thought this is an opportune moment. And I felt I had uh, done the best to my ability, to my beliefs, what I could contribute uh, for free thought, for liberal thought, for democratic thoughts in this country. I'm a small little ant, a small little person, but in my very own minuscule way, I tried to do what best I could do, and uh, I believe I have done that. So I thought it's best that instead of, uh, you know, making announcements, why don't I make a move? Why don't I do something? And with my son pushing me, uh, I thought that journalism is where I belong to. I have been the editor of two newspapers. It's not that I have not been writing my editorials, but I have not really been able to give justice in the sense of time to the two newspapers, Dharitri and Orissa Post, that I own and I edit and I'm actually hands-on editor. So I thought I'll go back to my passion. And uh, another point, I also believe that uh, politicians in India, like in the West, should have a core competency in some profession. When we take up politics as a sole profession, then we go to extreme lengths to damage whatever is required uh, to stay in power. And I don't believe in that. You know, a couple of things that I'm going to follow up with, uh, and not because um, you know, I have any disbelief in what you're saying, but it's just such an unusual position coming from an Indian politician. I mean, no one gives up um, a safe seat. Uh, so it's, it's, just, it's just strange. But I have to ask you, you say 63 and, you know, let the youngsters take over. Sir, in the life of Indian politics, 63 is just a spring chicken. You're just starting out. Uh, I mean, if, if you look around. So, so that's that's question number one. Is that is that the real reason? Also, you talked about your son, and since you brought this up, why do you think that your son doesn't want you to be a politician? Do you think that there's a negative stereotype about politicians, which may have influenced, you know, that perception as well? Um, thirdly, you have called yourself a liberal politician or someone who's espoused liberal views. Don't you think that now, more than any other time? There is a need for politicians who push that view. Mm, let me answer the question of, uh, concerning my son first. Yes, what you say is true. Uh, his classmates also think that, you know, when they read the newspapers, when they see stories about war, how people are speaking about violence, how, spe how people are 
uh, everywhere. I am not pointing a finger at any particular person. Everywhere, across the length and the breadth of this country, how unabashedly politicians go about uh, emptying out the coffers for their, uh, you know, the state coffers for the election purposes, how politicians are uh, warmongering, how politicians do so many things that uh, I believe that the generation that my son is in, uh, they probably do not appreciate it. So this, the moment their consciousness is awakening, there is a dislike for this kind of a profession. Although I do not agree with it, I think politics is a noble pro profession because uh, it is something which concerns policy and governance. And it is not only sloganeering and, uh, no, and collecting and, and, money. And, and, and as I was just, we I was just going to say, sir, that the alternate profession that you've now chosen, journalism, unfortunately at this time, a lot of journalists have not really covered themselves with glory. It's, it's going through a bad patch as well. So <laughs> it's possibly been a tough choice. Yes, uh, so that's why I also said that I would like to try. I, I can only promise that I will try. I do not know if I'll succeed or not, but try to be impartial and fearless in my journalism because media, whether in Odisha or in the nation, national level, we notice how uh, they are either browbeaten, arm twisted, bought over, seduced, whatever words you want to use. So everybody sees that. So when they say fake news, it really bothers me that every news may not be fake news, but anything that doesn't suit me, I can just put a hashtag and say fake news. Uh, in that sort of a scenario, just as we say that why don't good people come into politics, I would say why don't good people come into journalism also? Why don't uh, uh, owners of the media houses allow freedom to their journalists not to amass property for their own selves, but also to practice uh, fair and uh, free journalism without uh, wondering whether uh, this kind of a reporting will take away one port of call from my kitty or another kind of uh, reporting may not give me this uh, government deal of um, you know building a uh, bridge or uh, building an aircraft or uh, building ships or whatever, you know, or building the Himalayas again. Uh, so, it, it's uh, yes, both these professions are under stress now, uh, dire duress, I would say, and uh, both need uh, more people. I am only a small person, I am an individual, I have no strength, I have no money bags backing me, and uh, Yes, it will be. Uh, it has always been an uphill task for me, believe me, even in politics. I have not been uh, a close coterie of anybody. Mm. I have uh, uh, survived on merit. And uh, even today, I think my constituency, people in my constituency of Dhenkanal and Angul districts, they have been very, very kind to me. They have been very loving to me. And they have always voted. Uh, uh, for me and uh, of the seven assembly segments I have, uh, I have got, uh, I'm happy to say this, I have got more votes than the assembly contestants of my party and since our elections are synchronized, assembly and parliament, uh, the, elect, the voting is held on the same day, same hall, uh, same room and the two machines are just maybe five feet apart. But in spite of that, every single booth, barring a few handful, every single booth, I score more uh, votes than my counterparts for the assembly. And, and yet, and seats. yet, and yet, you walked away just a few months with just a few months to go. And um, I have to ask you. As someone who's still in the transition phase, what, what went wrong then? Um, as a journalist, I need to ask you whether it was a situation where you thought you didn't, was not, were not getting that kind of support from your party or from your leadership. Uh, were there extraneous uh, uh, you know, situations? Because coincidentally, uh, another of your uh, colleagues, former colleagues, Jay Panda, has also quit the party a few months ago but said he would join the BJP. Is there any connection there which we're not seeing on the surface? No, no, I, I am not connected to him in any which way. 
he is a very big man he has got lots of mines and industries and stuff like that he is a rich person i am a uh, hard working i am a i am a ground level man i am i cannot compare myself to somebody uh, of his stature i am not comparing myself uh, and i will also uh, admit openly i went and met the Uh, chief minister and the party president mr navin patnaik yesterday he was very kind and he was surprised he asked me why just like you started this interview you are, he asked me twice why so um, it is not that i fell out with the leadership it is not that i disrespect him i have not been writing articles against my leadership i have not made any utterances i have not been an indisciplined member uh i have not said that for so many years i have been wanting to go and join another party while being in this party i have never said such things so i will not compare myself with anybody else because i believe uh, i am very humble you know i believe i am extremely unique and uh, i am very disciplined and uh, my leader has been very very kind to me so also my electorate uh, i always had this dream and when my son started telling this to me uh, about a year ago i thought one should ideally quit when one is riding the crest not when one is down yeah. in the dumps no that is true so, quit 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 before you pushed out that that's actually a great thought so now that now that you've come over to the other side uh, i can ask you frankly mr satpati what do you make of uh, the upcoming elections how do you perceive the chances of your former party the biju janata dal uh, the bjp is of course shoring up they've got jay panda now on their side uh, do you think that navin patnaik has a tough fight on his hands this time See, this is the fifth term of Mr. Navin Patnaik, but yet, if you see the rural belt of Orissa, I will not be able to predict so much about the urban uh, segments because the urban segments are very small in Orissa. There are no big metropolitan cities in the state, uh, but the bulk, I think, 85 to 90 percent would be rural. Uh, the rural belt. is uh, very much in the sway of the biju janata dal and navin patnaik and whomsoever you stop on the street and ask so who do you think you will vote for and they will say sankho sankho means the conch shell you know that which people blow during pujas uh, so that's the symbol of the biju janata dal uh, people openly say that normally they hesitate to uh, tell you where they want to vote so this is pre poll Uh, this is kind of admission so as of now i cannot predict the future but as of now if you go anywhere in orissa and ask where, where people would like to vote they still say it is navin patnaik it is sankho what do you think uh, is going to be the picture on a national scale uh, this was of course about odisha but uh, the big battle coming up um, is um, for for delhi Uh, do you think um, that uh, the likelihood of a second term for prime minister modi is more at this point or do you think the opposition is gaining traction how do you see the current picture see, the opposition i felt during the pulwama and the aftermath after that i thought the opposition is being uh, reticent or is being uh, defensive pointlessly they were not willing to uh, come up and uh, you know they uh, probably thought that if they say something which is uh, not appropriate they may be labeled as uh, um, uh, anti national but we also have to realize that uh, the nation that is india and an individual any individual for that matter let us say tathagat satpati trying to label himself as india they are two distinctly very very different things so i do not know i cannot predict at a national level but uh, i have a hunch which uh, uh, i can only uh, i can i can i mean i won't mind speaking up publicly i have a hunch that the next uh, parliament session a uh, parliament uh, the next lok sabha the 17th lok sabha may not have very clear cut defined lines of uh, uh, an absolute majority may not i am underlining that may not because uh, 
You see, uh, gradually Indians have this tendency, we swallow everything that is dished out to us, but over a period of time, give us 48 hours, 72 hours, give us a week, we start questioning. That is the good part about India. So however much uh, a war hysteria might have been built up thinking that uh, uh, this is going to bind everybody together, Imagine a person in Orissa, in a village in Dhinkana, what does he know about Pakistan? What is his concern? There is nobody he knows who has moved to Pakistan. There is nobody who has come from Pakistan. Pakistan is like Mexico or Pakistan could be like Egypt. For somebody in Karnataka or somebody in Tamil Nadu, there is not uh, that kind of a distinct connect as say of people in Punjab or Rajasthan or Uttar Pradesh or Madhya Pradesh. So there is a, this is too vast a country. And uh, I would not take anything for granted. I would not say this party will lose, that party would win. I cannot say that. I don't have the ability. I'm not a psychologist. But I have a hunch that things may get uh, muddled and the lines will not be very clear after the next elections in the 17th Lok Sabha. Okay, uh, just you know, to wrap up this wonderful conversation, you have chosen to move uh, from being a politician to a journalist, but at the same time you have said that you wish to make a difference and contribute to society. Do you think that you could do more as a journalist rather than an MP, which is a powerful position where you can actually make change for people? Do you think you will be able to achieve more as a journalist? I will try. I tried my hand at uh, being a legislator. I was um, an MLA for five years from 90 to 95. I have been an MP 98, uh, 2004, 2009, 2014. Uh, so I have uh, uh, I have had my stint, and uh, I think you should. All of us should reach a stage where after we are. Uh, say, uh, three, four times we have been elected, we are MPs, MLAs, ministers, prime ministers, chief ministers, then uh, I think it's good, better for the country if, uh, uh, you know, if we allow social leadership, that's how I would put it, if we allow social leadership, I'm not talking about an NGO, I'm talking about social leadership which is badly lacking in India, if we can create or help create a better, healthier social leadership, then I think we can lessen our uh, burden on the politicians. We will have voices which will genuinely speak about our needs, not waylay us and tell us stories that we don't really bother about. And if there is a uh, difference in approach of that social leadership, it would impact politics also. So through journalism, in my very tiny little way, I would like to try out in Orissa if I can help contribute in uh, building up a social leadership which will be above and beyond political leadership. Political leaders can come, go, they can do whatever drama they want. I don't have any problems. But I want something, a system, a leadership that actually speaks about the people, that actually, I'm not talking about my drains getting cleared, uh, clean, or that a soldier is, uh, uh, you know, standing guard at uh, Sia Chin, you know, something funny. I was sitting in the central hall and there were a few MPs, I will not name their parties, uh, and there were three, four of them, so we were gossiping and uh, uh, suddenly this uh, Desh Bhakti issue came up. And so I said, yeah, it's true, it's, you know, our soldiers are suffering and, you know, Siachin, ha ha, Siachin, of course, yeah. I said, who actually, who, who's the uh, enemy on the other side? Who are our soldiers facing? You won't believe, out of five MPs, four of them didn't know which country we were facing off Siachin. We were, all four of them said, China, with China, no? China, China is on the other side. Yeah, sure, China. Yeah, 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 China, China. Chin, Sia, Chin. So Chin is China. So that's fine. That's the level of concern we have for this country. And uh, therefore, it is necessary that instead of misguiding people and always trying to take them off track, let there be a social leadership and let journalists like you, the leading ones in this nation, may you be blessed 
to lead the people towards a more healthier, robust social leadership, which can withstand the trials of this uh, society and actually give a better India to all those young people we are talking about. Okay. And I would insist that all politicians above 60 should quit. Just get out. <laughs> I leave it at that. That's that's a great last line. I thought uh, there was a party who had a cutoff at 75, but Tathagat Satpati says 60 and done. Quit when he's on top uh, of the game. Thank you so much, Mr. Satpati, for speaking with us Thank today, you. Thank and uh, welcome to the other side.